I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Let the minutes show that Executive Assistant Laura A. Marsh is present as her role as recording secretary. Uh, and let the minutes show that uh, Commissioner Whittem, Commissioner Marr, and Commissioner, uh, uh, Commissioner Tyre and Ms. Commissioner Mello are both present. And I'd like to recognize the staff present, uh, Chief Master J. Canfield, uh, Lieutenant Kevin Butler and Richard, Richard, excuse me, Richard Simmons. Now we have a quorum, so let's move on to personnel matters, commendations, and awards. Chief Canfield. Uh, nothing. Uh, training, Chief Canfield. Uh, there's nothing of note under training. Okay. Orders and bulletins. Nothing. Miscellaneous, Chief Canfield. Nothing. Resignations and retirement. Um, the first one is uh, Andrew Cook, who was a probationary police officer with us, um, went through the academy and uh, entered into the field training program. Um, he decided that uh, this job was not for him and uh, tendered a resignation. So he is no longer with us. Uh, the second one is uh, Lieutenant Richard Simmons will be retiring as of the end of August. Um, he'll be <coughs> going to work for Homeland Security doing school safety assessments and uh, working on those drills. So although he can speak a little bit more on his own behalf, but I know I'll, I'll miss him. I think the, the whole department will miss him. He's done a really good job. He's been with us for 23 years. Um, but certainly when the opportunity knocks and those jobs present themselves, you kind of have to take them because you never know when they're going to show up again. So I don't think it was his intent to retire right now, but um, it is what it is. So I appreciate that, Chief. And that's exactly how I would put it, just the way he did. So, you know, it was a good opportunity. And, and I don't want to turn that up because you don't know if something like that would come up again. Yeah. Uh, but I very much appreciated my time here. Learned a lot here. And, uh, you know, as I put in my letter, definitely see. Uh, city and certainly Laconia PD as, as my extended family so yeah. nice. uh, we'll move on off to a new adventure <laughs> we will be having a retirement luncheon for him on August 21st at 1230 at the PD so we'll send you the, the invites for that as well but you have to put that in your calendar hiring Chief Canfield <coughs> So uh, they, they did the Great Bay test. They did the f uh, PT test the first week of June. Uh, they did interview processes, and they're conducting a, is it four backgrounds, Kevin? Three now. So it's been, it's been dwindled down. We started with four. Um, we have currently two openings. With Andrews, it'll be three, and then with lieutenants, it'll be four. Um, we've been working through several issues with uh, several different backgrounds, but hopefully we'll have those those open positions filled as a result of this with a start date of August 4th um, with the hope of getting them into the September Academy. And I know, Chief, that from talking with you that only sergeants can apply for, for Rich Rich's position. Was there a minimum time as a sergeant in that policy that you referred to? <coughs> Two years. Two years as a sergeant. Yep. Were there any substitutions allowed in your well, I did this before at somewhere else or in a supervisory type setting. Or? I don't think our policy specifies. I think it just talks about two years as a sergeant. So um, without reviewing the policy off the top of my head, I think anyone with two years of experience as a sergeant, whether it's here yeah. or somewhere else, would be eligible. <coughs> in that process, the promotional process for lieutenant and sergeant is underway. The, the announcements have gone out and... Um, that'll be conducted with a plan of having people in place by the time the lieutenant um, leaves in order for him to maybe get some someone taking his place up to speed on. Yeah, that was my next <coughs> question. Is there any, any, any uh, OJT before he leaves with the new person? 
Yes, we have a, the sergeant's process is a little bit more formalized. It's a, it's a 10 day, two week training program that they're doubled up with a, another sergeant um, that they go through a, a, a training program. The lieutenant program isn't quite so structured, but yeah, our, our plan is to have someone um, sit down with the lieutenant and go over the, at least the, the big major tasks so then they're up to speed. I guess that covers promotions and classification changes. <laughs> yes, sir. Um, we want to commend staff reports uh, to Canfield. Uh, the captain is on vacation. Um, the budget, we haven't gotten the final budget numbers, but I believe that was on track as well as the motorcycle week budget numbers. Um, I don't think those, I think they came in too late for the packet, but we were under for almost $20,000 on our motorcycle week budget, so that looked good. You have to do Turn that to City Hall, or is that something you can retain in the budget? For no, this year? yeah, it goes back to, to City Hall. It's a it's a budget specifically for motorcycle week. So operations, Lieutenant Simmons. <clears throat> uh, we just got done with Fourth of July. Uh, had a parade and the events at Opichi. I thought that went very well. Um, early in the morning, there's uh, always a, a large amount of people at the beach and the weirs. I think we could have used a little more manpower this year. Uh, so that's something I already met with the new director of Parks and Rec we met <coughs> yesterday and talk about um, doing a little better with that next year to get some more bodies up there. Um, has there been any, excuse me, has there been any incidents? I know reading from the paper, they, I guess, where they got 2,000 person <coughs> women at, at yeah. uh, Weir's Beach and by 7.30 it, it's oh, I would to say turn by people away? 5 o'clock in the morning. It's full up there. We actually, mm -hmm. we have people posted every year, the morning of 4th of July, starting at 4. There's a, a lot of people. Have you had any incidents as a result of people being frustrated that they can't get in there? Or? Not, nothing major. Um, you know, just more like they had, you know, the hookahs on the beach was a violation and, and um, you know, some drinking and stuff like that. But they're, they're mostly, you know, decent families. There's just so yeah. many down there that we need, you know, we have some traffic issues, parking yeah. issues, that kind of thing. A lot of them bust in. I didn't see any buses. I think they all come in cars. Right. <laughs> they just come in a lot of cars. It, traffic was backed right up on the boulevard uh, at 9 o'clock in the morning. So it, it looked like bike week just with cars instead of motorcycles for a little bit. It's probably going to happen this weekend, too. I don't know. <coughs> yeah, this weekend will probably be a busy weekend also. Um, we had National Night Out coming out. National Night Out, uh, 22 Stratford Street on August 6, 5 to 7. I anticipate this is going to be a very large one because it's, you know, right in the big parking lot of uh, an apartment building. Um, Laconia Housing Authority has been helping out with this. We have a lot of invites out there. Uh, I think this is going to be a, a, a really good national night out, providing we get good weather for it. That's the one thing we can't control. Um, and then starting to ramp up for the Citizens Academy. That will be in September. Just sent out a press release for that uh, yesterday. Um, and we'll start working on getting that put together. That's all I have. Uh, training, if you can't feel. Um, three members that are assigned to the Regional Accident Investigation Team will be attending the uh, investigation of motorcycle crashes being held in, uh, at Guilford PD. Um, this, this is a pretty intensive school as a, most of the accident reconstruction schools um, it's a class that doesn't come around very often. Usually they're out of state, so we're fortunate that that's going to be held right in Guilford, so that's very convenient. Um, both of our school resource officers, Brian Moynihan and Steve Orton, attended a uh, school resource officer conference. It was a two-day conference in Concord. Uh, and then Joe Marquis, Officer Joe Marquis, will be attending the National Tactical Officers Association uh, <coughs> conference and trade show in uh, Orlando, Florida, which is paid for through a Homeland Security grant. Uh, a question on, on the uh, motorcycle investigation. There are three off, there are three, three people out. Logistically, how does that impact? Um, the good thing is one is, a, is uh, the captain, the other one is a sergeant, so um, Lieutenant Simmons will work with the schedule. Either staff officer will cover his shifts or a floater sergeant, depending on what vacation time and those needs are. And then the uh, officer Howe will be covered just because it, it, it's one officer, so that, that can be, that's doable. And then on the second two requests, 
uh, initially there were just two offices out, and then partway through the time they were out, you pick up Officer Marquis, who was also out. So it gives you, again, three people out. The, the same, kind of the same process. Yeah, I mean, certainly, you know, training and um, those assignments are a, a, a drain on schedule, for sure. Um, but it's, it's, a, it's a matter of balance and the needs for quality training because we get better results and the ability to do more um, with the need to cover those, those spots on the schedule. So, oh, I know this was a bad year for motorcycle accidents and during bike week. Yeah. I was wondering, was it 40, 44, is that the number, right? 40 something? Or? Yeah, I think it was slight, slightly less than, but right about there, yeah. yeah. Were all those, did all those accidents happen in the, in, in the Coney PD jurisdiction or were they all 40 of them, or whatever the number was, or was it, did Meredith have some that was? Those were Laconia only. Laconia only. I think nine of those were, were injury accidents, so some pretty severe ones. We didn't have any fatal accidents, which was good, but we certainly had a very significant number of crashes. Yeah, it's just too bad this training didn't happen in May. You could have put it to use. Right. <laughs> uh, moving on, investigations, uh, Lieutenant Butler. No, nothing new, just lately working around vacations, covering each other. Questions? Uh, Cross Street of Sawyer was not here. Uh, moving on to Commission Action. Acceptance of the minutes of the previous meeting. Uh, do I have a motion? I move that we accept the minutes of the previous meeting as presented. Second. A second on a motion made by Commissioner Tarr. And seconded by Commissioner Mello, uh, passes unanimously, I would assume, yes? Yes. Uh, the meeting minutes of June, June 26th were accepted as distributed. Review of monthly activity reports. Mr. Canfield, department highlights. So for last month, we had a total of 2,099 calls for service, which was down slightly from the corresponding month last year, which was at 2,111. We investigated 325 criminal offenses, cleared 267 of them by uh, physical custody arrest and made a total 147 arrests. Uh, conducted 509 motor vehicle stops, which was up from 419 the corresponding month last year. Issued a total of 38 motor vehicle summonses, 329 written warnings. We had no fatal accidents for the month. Responded a total of 59 motor vehicle accidents, 29 of which had injury. I think a large, probably half of those were, or nine of those were during motorcycle week. 203 parking tickets, seven DWI arrests, and 32 people were taken into custody for intoxication. We responded to 41 domestic disturbance calls, 115 other disturbances, eight suicidal subjects, investigated 10 violation restraining orders, and uh, Laconia police employees donated a total of five volunteer hours on their own time. The victim services unit volunteered 15.5 hours, serving a total of 21 victims. Questions? Uh, Criminal Investigative Unit Statistics, Lieutenant Butler. Uh, unless you have any questions, I did want to add that um, under, the s under the heading polygraph exam, that number is not correct. For 2019 year to date, it's actually 15. And then for June, it's one. Those didn't get added for some reason, I'm not sure. <clears throat> are, are those, Lieutenant, are those mostly um, are those mostly new hire polygraphs? Or are no, they it's, it's both. Those criminal invest cases both. that you're working both. on? Both. They're both. both. It's probably 70-30, 70% 70 70 pre-employees, 30% criminals. Although we schedule, I schedule a ton of criminals, 90% of them don't show up. So all they call and they don't show up at the last minute. So <clears throat> the majority of those numbers are pre-employees, but there are still some criminals in there too. Oh, yeah, those, <coughs> those uh, exams, are they recorded? Yes. And everyone is, is given a, a uh, information ahead of time that they are recorded. Oh, yeah. Recorded. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's, a, it's a very structured yep. 
very lengthy process. It can be yeah. very, very lengthy. Uh, like, for instance, today it was six hours. Is that done in-house? Do, do you have a contractor to do that? I do. You do that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I see that uh, we're up uh, 10 more uh, sex offenders. Yes. And that's we've had a number, for whatever reason, that have moved in recently. So I don't know why, but they're, they've moved in recently, so those numbers are up. That's Jeff Wally's covering most of those, if not all of those. <clears throat> Do you know roughly or approximately how many sex offenders are registered in the city right now? We hover right around between 90 and 100, and it's pretty constant. We'll gain five, lose three. It, so it pretty much stays a pretty much a constant between 90 and 100. Interesting. I noticed in, in looking through some uh, properties for sale online, and a lot of the agents have a section that will show a small map and it'll highlight a mm -hmm. dot locations where, you know, registered sexual offenders yep. are. Yep. And then you can click on that little mark and it'll show their page. Show the face. Yeah. yeah. Yep. You supply that information to That's, that I believe is supplied to the PD, yes. Yeah, I think so. That's public information. Well, those, those maps, when they come up, you look, they're pretty current. It's, uh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah it's state. real time. As soon as the state gets it, it updates it's whatever list they have yeah. as well. And it's only certain offenders. Not all offenders are public list offenders. So you may look at a list and it says we have 30. That's not accurate. Yeah. That's 30 public list sex yeah. offenders. We have an additional 60 or 70 of them yeah. above that. They only get 10 days to register when they move. So those those lists should be pretty up to date. Fairly accurate. Mm -hmm. In terms of compliance mm -hmm. uh, with people moving or in or moving out without registering within the 10-day time frame? Has that been a big issue or? Not a huge issue. The, the biggest issue we have, and Jeff regularly issues warrants for, for people, is failing to notify us of Facebook accounts that they're using sometimes nefariously. Um, <clears throat> but for the most part, it's, it's a slap on the wrist first. If it's yeah. a knowingly somebody's hiding from us, then yes, we go felony first offense. Yeah. And is, does Jeff work closely or at all with probation and parole in these cases? Um, no, not no, really. not really. <clears throat> they, they, probation actually helps us out, makes them. So anybody that's on probation that's a sex offender is yeah. guaranteed going to be on the law. Yeah. It's the ones that are off probation that forget, or they're the harder ones to manage. So it takes quite a bit of time. He's banging on doors if, if they're not coming in. Monthly traffic statistics, Chief. For the month of June, we responded to 206, or we issued 206 parking tickets. 140 of them were for overtime parking, 12 were for no parking zones, one left wheel to curb, three for handicap violations, six for sidewalk parking on the sidewalks, four for blocking alleys or driveways, 14 space not des designated, and 24 others, and then two park midnight to sunrise. And then uh, we responded a total of 59 accidents, 29 of which had injury. And again, the, the, the top cause for accidents is driver inattention and this month followed by safe back, unsafe backing, which was nine of those. Uh, oh, when I came in, I came in this afternoon, I came off Beacon Street West to Beacon Street East, and there's a, a, an island with plants growing on it. You can't see cars coming because of the, the shrubbery growth. Hmm. I mean, okay. I actually had to get my nose way out into the, into the, uh, into main, like main, main the main, yeah. Okay, I'll take a look at a it. A lot of, we'll get a hold of parts of high it. growth there. Uh, moving on, monthly fleet report, Chief Canfield. Uh, nothing. And budget printouts? Nothing, unless you have questions. Oh. No. Cover that really well. Correspondence to and from the department. We had some nice uh, thank you letters. Nice thank you letter from Commissioner Mello. Very nice thank you letter from a person who does not live in Laconia but has a boat that's docked at Earl Marine down at the end of Appleton Street. Uh, yeah, interaction with Officer Cardinal down there and was uh, impressed with 
the way she remedied the situation down there and the security that she, she provided. <clears throat> Use a uh, high-ranking person from the, the Navy Reserve, I believe. Um, so it was very nice. Thank you. So Linda. before you leave that letter, Chief, yeah. um, I, I understand uh, their concern for sure. Mm -hmm. um, but I also understand resources, reality. So is there, a, is there any kind of a game plan that you're going to swing through there or? There is. This was put out to patrol as an extra patrol. Yeah. So during the <coughs> uncommitted time of the, the car that works that area, um, this is on roll call as far as be, they should spend some extra time in that area and just realize that it's should get a little bit more attention than uh, than other areas. Certainly the, the call volume down there doesn't support it, but, you know, it's a perceived issue, and I think the security that yeah. seeing a cruiser drive through the area or sit there and do paperwork. And um, particularly if help. you're staying overnight on the boat, if you're just using the boat during the day. Right. But where they're staying overnight, and they're the only ones apparently in that, row of slips that does that. Right. And you know, that'd be a little disconcerting to have to run into these locals. Yeah, you know. for sure. For sure. Let me ask Chief Cheney. I know that he had a, one time had a boat. Yeah, <laughs> yes, you, Chief. <laughs> I know that Sorry. one time uh, Chief Cheney, I think, had a boat in this uh, area. Off I did. Pontoon boat. I did used to go on it regularly and turn my radio on, so that when I went to start it, there was no juice. <laughs> was that the most serious thing that happened while you were over? There was some uh, vandalism, <coughs> other boats, stuff stolen, uh, but nothing terrible. Yeah. Just curious. Thank you. Then we had a nice thank you letter for Officer Kimpis, who helped a, uh, a family that was broken down on Brewers Boulevard. We reached out and sent some nice, kind words about him. Report. Uh, so let's see. Drug overdose calls year to year to date. We've had a total of 27 year to date. Uh, last year we had a total of 109, so we're certainly trending way under on drug overdoses. Drug overdose deaths last year we had a total of 12 for the entire year. So far this year we've had two, um, three in July, so those are down as well. Chief, just a comment, I guess. I, I saw where uh, Area Chief was giving his opinion about uh, overdoses in a, in a nearby town in the Lakes region here. And he was, I guess the, the, his, his, his opinion was that straight up fentanyl use and therefore overdose deaths are, are going down because the users now are, are mixing fentanyl with other things like meth cocaine and other sorts of drugs that are out there. And I guess reducing the effect of Narcan to some degree um, because of it only works on opioids and if someone's using meth, right? No, they well, we, I, just wonder, I, just, I guess okay. a long-winded long question is, is that, is that something that's happening in Konya today? Or? We are definitely seeing a downtick in fentanyl, yes. As far as mixing the two together, not so much, very little. We have seen an uptick in cocaine, which is powder cocaine, not the crack. Mm -hmm. But as people don't overdose on meth, so if they take meth with a heroin chaser or vice versa, and you Narcan them, they're just gonna come up fighting. So the meth is still gonna be there. It doesn't, Narcan doesn't do anything to the meth, but it does neutralize the opioid. So they would come right up, but they'd be superhuman when they wake yeah. up, you know? So. But no, I, haven't, I can't see that we've seen a lot of the mixing. Hmm. Thank you. Um, speaking of overdoses, so January to June for the doorway uh, program at the hospital, they've had a t total of 258 calls for the, that six month period, which is the first six months that they've been open. Um, they've handled six, uh, 86 walk in, uh, people that have walked into the doorway asking for help. And 133 um, of those 258 calls were opioid related. Um, so it's kind of a one stop shop and they'll help with other kinds of addiction and substance abuse. But 133 of those were opioid related. Do you have any, any ideas? Doorways, they don't distinguish or 
They don't distinguish uh, where these people come from, correct? So you don't know if they're from Laconia right. or from any other place for that matter. They just Right, it could be anywhere. It could be anywhere. Yeah. Um, certainly, it's it's the the hospital catchment area here yeah. is all of the lakes region. Um, I know that they ran into that problem with the safe stations program in Manchester, and Nashua. People from you know this area, Concord, Portsmouth, were going down there seeking help in their in their uh, safe station program. So it actually drove their numbers really high when most of them weren't from those cities. So it, it is really difficult to tell, but certainly that those are not. Total numbers just from Laconia. So on August 7th, I'll be attending the uh, school emergency planning meeting with um, myself, the school department, the fire department, and Homeland Security to talk about their school safety plans before uh, the school year starts off. Um, some of the command leadership from the, the schools, all the schools will be involved in that conversation, which we're looking at probably going to be a two hour. Uh, kind of a workshop type of thing. Um, we helped out with the ride for the Fallen 7, which I'm sure you saw, um, that started from the Broken Spoke. Um, what was it, like 3,000 motorcycles? I don't know if we ever got a, a real number, but there was, there was a lot yeah. of motorcycles up there. Yeah, there was a lot of motorcycles, and but it went off very well. Um, they gathered, gathered at the Broken Spoke. I think we had some parking issues but we mitigated those and we got them out of town and the, the route was very good um, one accident leaving town yeah back on roller coaster road bit, but wasn't, wasn't horrible uh, was that before the ride or during the ride? it was during, during the, ride. the ride what about the one before was that any associated with that the new one before that I didn't know there was one before that I don't know right. I don't remember hearing about that but I mean the ride before that yeah, yeah. before the ride that morning that they were assembling, oh, before we took off, there was I thought there was one on the roller coaster road. Yeah, I don't think so. I don't think so. <coughs> yeah. It was early. I mean, it was roller coaster road, so it was early on when they first started out. Yeah, that yeah. happened. So, and then there was a second one, I guess, out of Laconia up on the interstate. Yeah. Well, maybe that's what it was. And then just a reminder, <coughs> on the national night out is August sixth. For your calendars. That's all I have. Yeah, if there are no questions, it's old business. Nothing. Nothing? New business. Nothing. Uh, confirmation of the next meeting date, August 21st. Wednesday the 21st. No conflicts. Okay, other business, Chief. Nothing. Citizen comments. I think. Before we adjourn, uh, are we, we going to discuss that letter that was was passed around today? What is that? The email. Yes. Um, we can, or we can talk okay. offline. Whatever you want. I just. Want yeah, to we we'll just talk off offline afterwards. Okay. Uh, is there a need for uh, non-public? There is not. Motion to adjourn. I move that we adjourn the uh, July meeting of the police commission. Second. second. On the motion made by Commissioner Carr, seconded by Commissioner Mello. All in favor? Aye. Aye. It passes unanimously, and the meeting is adjourned at 3:30.